being physically mistreated as well as we know that these two children who've died in custody, clearly the system is not working. Uh, that's not a news flash. We all know that the system for asylum. Um, when you see that video of those kids, those, two, those children in custody there being physically mistreated as well as we know that these two children who've died in custody, clearly the system is not working. Uh, that's not a news flash. We all know that the system for asylum seekers is not working. President Trump had a theory on what's broken. He tweeted, any deaths of children or others at the border are strictly the fault of the Democrats and their pathetic immigration policies that allow people to make the long trek thinking they can enter our country illegally. They can't. If we had a wall, they wouldn't even try. What do you think about the president casting blame in that way? Well, that's a true shame, Allison, and one can only hope, and I truly believe that these are isolated incidents. I visited some of these facilities in uh, South Florida and uh, happy to say that uh, the children there were being treated with great care. Uh, however, this does need to be looked into, and rather than dehumanizing these children and trying to assign blame summarily, whether it's to Democrats or Democrats trying to blame the administration, we do need to find out uh, what's going on, and more broadly, we do need to reform our asylum policies in this country. We put an immigration bill on the floor just a few months ago that provided a solution for about two million DACA recipients, increased border security, and also reformed our asylum laws because although we must be a compassionate and caring nation, I also understand that the United States cannot be the orphanage for all of the uh, poor children in the yeah. world. So we need to find that healthy balance and we do need to do our best to treat the children who are in our custody uh, as best as possible. But I mean, as a Republican, from where you sit, though there's a Republican in the White House, and as we know, Republicans control both houses of Congress, do the Democrats deserve some blame for how broken this is? Well, I think everyone deserves blame uh, to the extent that we haven't reached an agreement, Allison. Our government is designed for dialogue and compromise. And that's why we put together a bill uh, that had wins for Republicans, for Democrats, for those who want more border security, for those who are sympathetic to the DACA population, who want to see them uh, have a permanent future in our country. That's what we need. And right now, I mean, you see what's happening. It's sad. The government is shut down in this country. And it seems like our political leadership, nobody cares. It doesn't make a difference to anyone. During previous shutdowns, you had people over at the Obama White House around the clock trying to reach an agreement, at least having conversations. Now, we're not even talking, and that's just a shame, mm -hmm. and it shows how far our politics have fallen in this country. Well, look, the president is very dug in on his demand for $5 billion for a wall, and I'm just wondering, as a member of Congress, as a Republican, can you define the president's wall? Do you know this morning exactly what that looks like, how long it is, how high it is, what it's made of? Well, I think that's part of the problem, that no one knows exactly what it is he would agree to. Uh, now, I, I do know that the solution is somewhere in the middle. I think most Americans do want to see more border security. Most Americans do understand there's a lot of human trafficking and drug trafficking at the southwest border. I think we would all like to see that diminished. And then I think most Americans also want to see us reform our immigration system in a compassionate way. And of course, uh, you had Senator Graham on your air yesterday articulating this. There must be a compromise, and that compromise does include or should include the DACA population. In our bill, we had two million young immigrants who were brought to this country as children who grew up here, who are working here, haven't broken any laws, they're paying taxes. Yes. Let's give them a path to a permanent future in this country. Pair that with border security. It's a very neat, elegant, symmetrical compromise. That's where the answer is. If uh, Congress is going to succeed, the, the next Congress, 116th Congress, in breaking the stalemate, it's going to be by compromising, not by digging in. And obviously, leadership starts at the top. And the president has to be the first one to come out and say, we have to compromise. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. That's the only way that our uh, system of government, where we have separation of powers, yeah. two houses of Congress, three branches, that's the only way it's going to work. That's a nice um, concept. Uh, it's a utopian concept right now because that is not <laughs> something that President Trump special, specializes in. Who do you think today owns the shutdown? 
who's at fault? Well, the answer to that question is very simple because the president declared a few weeks ago that he would be the one to shut down the government and that he would take pride in doing it. So now he has the opportunity to say, okay, uh, I made that threat, I delivered on it, uh, now let me try to help here and uh, find a way out of this. And I think uh, he really needs to look to leaders like uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, Senator McConnell has a lot of experience in uh, negotiating in uh, getting the government out of difficult situations. We certainly saw that in 2011 and again in 2012. Uh, the president should really empower uh, congressional leaders to resolve this. He should empower them to come up with compromises. Members of Congress should be allowed to legislate uh, something uh, that we've seen uh, little of in recent years because everything is dominated by uh, the White House, whether it was Obama or now Trump, and a small handful of uh, congressional leaders. That's not the way our system should work. That's why uh, it's uh, uh, to the point where there's complete gridlock. No one's even talking. And that's why Americans lose more and more trust and confidence in their government every day. Uh, these are things that I'm not going to miss about Congress, but that I know need to be fixed about Congress and our federal government if especially younger Americans yeah. are going to start believing in our government again.